Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about whether Thermite is still relevant in the current Rainbow Six Siege meta. But before we get into that, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more gaming related content every Saturday. It really does help me out a lot and the channel growth has been really good these past few weeks. But anyway, let's get on with the video. The introduction of Shadow Legacy introduced more than just new optics and sensitivity changes that made you want to slam your desk until it broke. It also introduced a new secondary hard breach gadget. Ubisoft announced this gadget during Steel Wave, so we knew it was coming, however it was only when I could actually use the thing that I could give my opinion on it. So does this new gadget make Thermite irrelevant? To determine that, we need to break the game down into its roles. On attack, there are a few main roles you can play. For today, we will be focusing mainly on soft breaching and hard breaching. Soft breaches can break through any destructible wall or unreinforced hatch. This category includes operators such as Buck, Sledge, and Dash. Hard breaches, on the other hand, are operators that can break through reinforced walls and hatches as well. These operators include Hibana, Ace, Maverick, and of course, Thermite. Actually, Thermite was the first hard breacher to be added into the game. His entire purpose as an operator is to get you through that wall, and this made him crucial to the team as at the game's launch there was no other option. Over time, however, more hard breaching operators were added into the game, with the most recent addition being Ace and Steel Wave. Of course, with the addition of more options and variety, Thermite's necessity did go down, though he is still widely used to this day, and some people still consider him the best hard breacher. So now that we understand Thermite's purpose in the game, let's take a look at his gadget and compare it to this new secondary gadget. Thermite's gadget is basically a glorified breach charge that takes 3 seconds to detonate and will create a large hole in any reinforced wall. It will also instantly blow open hatches, and because of its large explosive radius, it can even blow up electrified hatches if the floor next to them is destructible. Finally, it can be remotely activated, which is something the new hard breach gadget cannot do. Instead, the new hard breach charge takes 7.5 to 8 seconds to detonate, and will create a small hole that you can vault through in any reinforced wall. It will instantly blow up reinforced hatches no matter where it is placed on the hatch, but unlike Thermite's charge, it cannot blow up electrified hatches regardless of whether the floor is destructible or not. So now that we know a few more of the numbers behind these two gadgets, it's very evident that Thermite's charge is superior in almost every way. Not only that, but Thermite gets two of his charges whilst the operators with this new secondary gadget only get one. But who exactly are these operators? Well, on screen right now you can see all 8 operators that the secondary gadget was given to. As you can see it ranges from operators that don't see a lot of play in ranked, like Fuse and Capital, to operators that definitely do, such as Lion and Ying. Since we've already established that Thermite's charges are superior, the discussion should end here, right? Well, not quite. Of course Thermite's gadget is going to be superior, after all his entire purpose in the game is to break through that wall, and since no other operator, hard breaches excluded, could break through a reinforcement, it made him special, and it made him a necessity. However, now that other operators have been given that ability, it devalues not only Thermite's relevance, but the relevance of every hard breacher in the game. For example, now that Ying has a hard breaching device, not only can you select an operator with an extremely powerful gadget, but also an operator that can break through reinforced walls too. Whilst in the past you may have had to make the decision between Thermite and Ying, now there is very little benefit to going Thermite as Ying can do exactly what he does, even if it's not as effective. However, there is one final component that we still haven't talked about, and that component is bandit tricking. This single feature instantly devalues the new hard breaching gadget by a landslide. Because of this new gadget's extremely lengthy deploy time, I'm 99% sure that everyone and their grandmother could bandit trick this device. And since you only get one of them, if you screw up, that's it. No more second tries. So now that we've talked about these gadgets extensively, let's conclude this discussion. Is Thermite still relevant? The answer to that is quite simple, and it's yes. Thermite is still an important part to every team, and his charge simply outclasses this new gadget in every possible manner. However, I'm pretty sure this is what Ubisoft intended to do. This new gadget was never meant to kill hard breaches, rather it was meant to increase the pick rate of other operators that maybe weren't used as much in ranked. It was meant to give an alternative to hard breaches so that players could play the operator they wanted to play without being punished for it and honestly, I think it's worked. When I first saw this new secondary gadget, I thought that it would break the game and honestly make hard breaches completely redundant, but I've been pleasantly proven wrong. 
But hey, my opinion is just one of many, so please share yours in the comments below. Do you agree with what I've said, or do you think that Ubisoft went too far with this new edition? What changes would you like to see implemented in the future? I read every single comment, so please tell me your opinion down below. Thank you all very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, then once again, be sure to like the video and subscribe for more weekly content. But most of all, have a good one.